Kabul, their majesties King Mohammad Zahir and Queen Homaira prepare to leave for their visit to the United States of America. Our mountain kingdom bids his majesty farewell. He will be our first king to visit the United States. West, toward the setting sun. The king and his retinue are on a trip that will take them halfway around the world. Their destination is Washington, the capital city of the United States. Their majesties, accompanied by the United States Chief of Protocol, land first in the United States at Langley Field in the state of Virginia. The flowers, the children, and the affection they receive resemble home. The first to welcome them are young Afghan students attending universities in the United States. Next day, their majesties travel to Washington, the capital of the United States. A gentle rain falls on the city as our king joins United States President John F. Kennedy for a ceremony of welcome on the lawn of the presidential residence. Together, the two leaders review the honor guard. It represents all five services of the United States. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, and the United States Coast Guard. His Majesty and the President express their mutual respect. Although distant from each other, our countries are as one in our people's desire to maintain independence to live in freedom, and to look to the future with hope. Visits of state call for dinners of state. Because his wife is ill, President Kennedy has asked his sister, Mrs. Eunice Shriver, wife of the director of the United States Peace Corps to act as official hostess. At our embassy, His Majesty himself entertains. He meets the Chief Justice of the United States and many other leading members of the national government. Their Majesties meet many friends of the Afghan people during their visit to Washington and to the United States. Later, the United States Secretary of State and Mrs. Dean Rusk hold a formal dinner for their Majesties. Official Washington pays its respects to Afghan royalty. The White House in Washington is both residence and office for the United States Chief Executive. The two leaders meet several times to talk about matters of common interest to our two countries. Economic development and social progress are among the most important subjects that they discuss. Washington has many parks and memorials. This one commemorates Abraham Lincoln. A hundred years ago, Lincoln became one of the greatest presidents of the United States. A man of infinite patience and determination, he led his country safely through its greatest crisis, a civil war. Today, their majesties visit the Lincoln Memorial. To understand any country, one must learn about its past leaders. Abraham Lincoln had great power of expression. His words, as well as his spirit, add solemnity to this beautiful memorial.
Washington Monument, an obelisk of stone 185 meters high, dominates the city skyline. It honors George Washington, the first president of this country, for whom the city itself is named. Mount Vernon, his old home, lies a few miles south of the capital, and many thousands of people visit the place where he lived and died, and from which he went forth to become a hero of history. In the city of Washington, the huge Capitol building stands on the brow of a hill. The elected representatives of the people of the United States come here to write the laws of the country. One of the most beautiful religious buildings in the United States, Washington's Islamic Center, stands in one of the main thoroughfares of the city. The mosque, the library, museum and school spread an understanding of Islam and provide a place of worship for Muslims in America. Five times daily, this holy place hears the voice of the Muezzin. And the 15 Muslim nations that sponsored the Islamic Center made it a magnificent place for worship. They built it of Native American stone, a modern rendition of ancient architecture. And they built it in the capital as a symbol of progress on the principle of Al-Iman wal -Iman. Many things make up the image of a nation. King Mohammed Zahir comes to Arlington National Cemetery where thousands of American soldiers lie buried. This hallowed place lies just across the Potomac River from the capital city. Afghans know the meaning of bravery and loyalty, of service and devotion to one's country. We understand this respect for fallen heroes, and our beloved sovereign shares the feeling of his subjects. Solemnly, he visits this place of the dead. in honored glory, an American soldier known but to God. In behalf of all the people of Afghanistan, His Majesty places a wreath of flowers at the tomb of America's unknowns. Washington, Children's Hospital. Her Majesty Queen Homaira comes to pay a call of her own. Hundreds of children, wide-eyed with wonder, await her visit. Children, a poet once wrote, come like beggars to this earth, but each can find a room in the corner of a mother's heart. from Afghanistan's neighbor, Iran, serve on this hospital staff. They are honored to act as Her Majesty's guides. During their second day in Washington, Their Majesties receive the honors of the city. The capital holds a parade to pay its respects to our king and queen. His Majesty rides slowly through the city's streets with President Kennedy. In scarlet tunics, the United States Marine Corps Band makes a part of the colorful procession.
Next, their majesties fly by helicopter to call on former United States President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who visited Kabul in 1959. The retired general and statesman now lives on a farm in the state of Pennsylvania. General Eisenhower raises prize cattle. His Majesty's plane flies south to Cape Canaveral in the state of Florida. From here, the epic voyages of the astronauts, Shepard, Glenn, Shira, and Cooper began. And from here, other giant manned rockets will soar to the moon and beyond. Hundreds of millions of people have watched these rockets take off. The United States makes rocket launchings open to the public. In the briefing room of the Launch Operations Center, the dreams and plans for the space age come alive with all their excitement, challenges, and importance to mankind. United States satellites circle the Earth right now as you hear these words, and they send back to Earth communications and weather reports. The great machines of space demand special metals and fuels, and much knowledge and skill. Our king asks many questions. To visit Cape Canaveral is to visit a new frontier. The state of Florida provides something else for His Majesty, for it has some of the finest fishing grounds in the United States. Fishing, like hunting, is often best on quiet mornings. Our sports-loving king relaxes for a day, aided by anglers who know these waters well. Just a few miles off the Florida coast, the Gulf Stream of the Atlantic Ocean flows north. Its current carries with it more than 500 species of fish. And fishermen come from all over the world to enjoy these interludes of sea and sun and sport. Fort Bragg, an important army training center in the United States, salutes our king. This is the home of the 82nd Airborne Division, which dips its proud colors in tribute to the soldierly sovereign of Afghanistan. This unit calls itself the All-American Division because its officers and men come from every one of the 50 states of the United States of America. A special review calls attention to the sky. 700 soldiers of the 2nd Airborne Battle Group jump together. Well done. A good demonstration. Westward, His Majesty flies across the heartland of America, over its rivers, forests, prairies, and canyons. The mountainous western states resemble the land of Afghanistan. Some of their cities lie almost as high as Kabul. At Laramie, in the state of Wyoming, on the campus of the State University, His Majesty hears again the voices of home. Eighteen young Afghan students attend this university preparing for future responsibilities in Afghanistan. What a pleasure it is to receive their king. Give me 
a home, a home on the range, run the words of the popular American song. We Afghans, more than most, share this love of the wide open spaces. Wyoming is one of the leading producers of sheep and wool in the United States. The university keeps several purebred flocks for teaching purposes and for research. Aware of His Majesty's interest in farming and animals, professors of the Animal Husbandry School tell him about their goals in producing better and better livestock. Cows of the Holstein breed often give 60 liters of milk or more every day. Dairy herd improvement associations all over America have worked miracles in increasing milk production by eliminating poorer cows. His Majesty takes great interest in facts about animal care, new type forages, and breed developments because of their possible value in Afghanistan. Under the sponsorship of our government and that of the United States, a team of experts from the University of Wyoming is now at work in our country, helping us develop our own agricultural resources. The westernmost state of America is California, which borders the Pacific Ocean. Her Majesty visits California Polytechnic College, where riders on Arabian horses perform a colorful salute to Afghanistan. Their trainers and riders love these high-spirited animals. site in the United States is a typical supermarket where American people do much of their weekly shopping for food. Customers serve themselves from the shelves and wheel their selections in carts to a cashier's checkout counter. Such labor and time-saving innovations in food distribution help reduce the cost of a housewife's food basket. The efficiency of agriculture, of transportation, of marketing, and of refrigeration all contribute to the variety and high quality of the food sold. Fresh fruits and vegetables may be had all year long. Meats are cut, weighed, priced, and prepackaged. Fine beef, lamb, and mutton are merchandised the supermarket way. Highways, ten lanes wide, cross the metropolis of Los Angeles, the biggest city in the state of California, and one of the most beautiful. Here on the shore of the ocean lies Marineland of the Pacific. You might call this a circus, whose only performers are creatures that swim. And what a spectacle! This seal takes a glass of water on a stick and swims across the pool. Porpoises are small whales. This one takes a line and tows a boat and a brave little dog. More 
porpoises. Sailors have always known them to be the friendliest creatures in the ocean. Today, we also know that far and away, they have more intelligence than anything that lives under the waves. From underwater windows, you can watch divers feed the fish. Marine Land of the Pacific has 3,000 specimens on display. They range from fish as small as your little finger up to whales that weigh 4,000 pounds. A vivid look at life beneath the seven seas. South of Los Angeles lies another park that resembles no other on Earth, Disneyland. It has rides and exhibits and shows. It has trains and planes and bands and balloons. It has almost everything you can imagine. One imagines that this is all for children, but it isn't. For every child that comes to Disneyland, there are four adults. And the wisest, most celebrated men and women have been charmed by its attractions and enchantments. A miniature train can make you forget the real world if you let it work its magic. All aboard, the conductors cry at Disneyland. For the rides that take you to a never-never land, to a world of fantasy and dreams. again, it isn't. It's all make-believe. A river launch at Disneyland takes you through the wildest jungle. Its realism makes you think that you have come to another world, that you have left the United States. to see all of Disneyland. Imagine now one of the great rivers of the United States and a paddle wheel steamboat, a common method of river travel 100 years ago in this country. How can one really explain this place, except to say that it brings smiles and dreams and that it stirs the imagination? Mickey Mouse is a well-known movie character. At Disneyland, he leads the band. Majesties have been honored guests at this unique place of dreams and fantasy, Disneyland in the state of California. Eastward, they will now fly, leaving Los Angeles behind them.
highlight of the royal trip to the United States is their majesty's visit to New York, the largest city of the United States. Between its buildings, hundreds of feet high, our beloved king rides up the famous thoroughfare of Broadway. This world-famous street has been called the Canyon of Heroes. For its towering buildings have looked down upon many distinguished men who have here received a parade of honor. newest great cities honors our king and our ancient kingdom. Highest of all, the Empire State Building rises almost 400 meters above the city streets. The spectacular views from its observatory help give it its nickname as the eighth wonder of the world. From here, Radio and television transmitters reach 14 million people in the city and surrounding suburbs. And one can look down on New York, the commercial and cultural center of the United States. Nearby, the United Nations headquarters stands by New York's East River. Secretary General Utant and the UN Chief of Protocol take their majesties into the great chamber of the United Nations General Assembly. From its rostrum, statesmen of more than a hundred countries have stated their views. Afghanistan has proved over the years to be one of the strongest supporters of the United Nations. Within this council chamber, ambassadors work to preserve the peace of the world. Their Majesty's 12-day visit to the United States of America draws to its end. They will fly 12,000 miles halfway around the earth to return to their mountain kingdom. Home awaits. The arrival of the royal plane in Kabul stirs loyal hearts to beating faster. Familiar banners. Friends, loved ones, children, flowers, mountains. Who can count the myriad chords that tie us to our homeland? It is the end of a long and successful journey. His Majesty, King Mohammad Zahir, first king of Afghanistan to visit the United States of America, is now safely home. Thanks be to Allah.